Merry Christmas, church. Gracious and warm welcome to you on this first Sunday of Christmas time as we gather remembering Christ who has come for us. A huge thank you to Sandy, Tyler, and John for all the work that they have been doing and continue to do to help us bring these services to you. And a huge thank you to everyone who put in the work to get our Christmas Eve services out to you. It was a lot of fun and I think they turned out really well. The only announcement I have for you this morning is that uh, uh, both councils at both congregations have decided that we are going to reopen to in-person worship on the 10th of January, following the same protocols that we did before. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you if you are able to come and join us. Uh, as it looks like the numbers are going down as far as the, the virus is concerned, and, and we feel it is a wonderful present for us to give to you after Christmas, allowing us to have the chance to gather again. Well, with that... Let us begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people, with all who come to the manger, rejoice in the amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Glory to God in the highest. Praise God, all the angels. Praise God, all the heavenly host. Praise God, sun and moon. Praise God, all you shining stars. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together, we will praise the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all. 
God is with us. Christ is born. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Micah, the fifth chapter. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you, for you will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks Steve. God.
The Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. First, every firstborn male must be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what it was stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took Jesus into his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanel, of the tribe of Asher, She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When Mary and Joseph had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. What is it that you would like to do or see in the new year, in 2021, after this COVID crisis is over? What is it that you've put off on your own accord or by local, state, or national mandate that you can now plan on doing in the new year? Now, I'm thinking that some of you might have already thought about next year a number of times, especially during this COVID crisis when you've had a lot of time to think. Maybe you've already envisioned yourself going to a restaurant and sitting down with your family and friends and having a wonderful meal together as you attempt to bring your life back to some kind of normalcy. Or maybe your New Year's dream is to go fishing up in Canada after the COVID restrictions have been lifted and the elusive walleye is just waiting for you to reel her in. Or maybe you're hoping to get back into church and worship again together and have a time of fellowship and get back to doing church like we were doing at about this time last year. Or maybe, well, you can fill in the blanks as to what it is you hope to see or do in 2021. We all have our hopes and dreams for what it is that we would like to have take place in our lives in the new year. But in today's gospel, we meet two people who have spent not just a year, but all of their life writing themselves, dreaming about that which they've been called upon to do. For in the last half of Luke's chapter 2, we're introduced to Simeon, a man who's been waiting for years on the Temple Mount, waiting for the Christ to come. And it tells us that in in today's Gospel that Simeon was a righteous and devout man, and the Spirit had promised him that he would not die until he saw the Messiah face to face. The image that I have of Simeon is that of an old, gray-bearded man. He's a little bent over, a man who moves slowly because of his age. And he has been 
spending most of his latter years of life at the temple waiting and searching, looking for the face of the Messiah among all those that visit the temple, hoping to get a glimpse of the promised Savior. And that happened on the 40th day after the birth of Jesus, the day of purification. That's when Mary and Joseph followed through on the Jewish law by bringing Jesus to the temple. In my mind's eye, I can see the Holy Family getting up early that day, that day of purification. And they walked the five miles from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. And as they entered Jerusalem, they made the steady climb up to the Temple Mount. And then there, from there, they were fighting the crowds on the temple. And they made their way over to the temple and bought those two, those pair of turtle doves to, uh, uh, to offer to, to God as a gift offering. Scripture tells us that Mary and Joseph with the baby Jesus were walking up the temple stairs when the Holy Spirit led Simeon to them, which ended Simeon's prophetic search a search that said that he would not see death until he saw the Lord's Messiah. Well, after the story of Simeon, Luke then continues by relaying that a woman, an 84-year-old widow by the name of Anna, was led by the Spirit to also look for and wait for the Savior. In fact, according to the text, Anna never left the temple. But rather, she stayed there day and night, fasting and praying, hoping to eventually see the Messiah of God. And again, God's Spirit brought Anna and the Christ child together. And it was that moment that Anna prophesied that this would be the child that would redeem Israel. Now, there must be some good reason why Simeon and Anna made it into Luke's Gospel. And there's got to be a good reason why on the first Sunday after Christmas we traditionally read this story. And I think that the one possible reason is found in the irony that while Simeon and Anna could not die until they met the Messiah, you and I really can't live until we know our Christ. Sure, each of us can journey through life trying to live out the yearly resolutions, celebrating our day-to-day living as part of our life on this celestial ball we call earth. And each of us can be successful and comfortable and at times joyous about our lives. But we can never truly know peace until we know the Savior. The Savior who has come to love us into the kingdom of God. Also, we see in Luke's stories of Simeon and Anna evidence that one of uh, one's life of faith is rarely a brief sprint, but in actuality is a lifelong marathon. In this age of instant gratification where pursuits of passion may last a day or a week or a month or a couple of years, we say Simeon and Anna spending a lifetime in their quest of fulfilling God's blessings of their lives. And I truly believe that this is the legacy of Simeon and Anna, that they willingly waited as God asked them. They waited for the Messiah to come to them for them. And for almost two millennia, Simeon and Anna have been viewed by the church as righteous saints because they sought to love, worship, and serve their Christ. And we understand, especially through Simeon's words, the idea and understanding that is synonymous with patience and faithfulness and serenity. Now, at the beginning of today's message, I ask, what is it that you would like to do or see in the new year? Where would you want 2021 to take you? But it occurs to me that that's not the right question to ask as we start this new year. Rather than asking, what would you like to do or see? Maybe the better question might be, how do you want to be remembered? What do you want your legacy to be from this point on? For legacies are determined as a result of the way that we live our lives. 
And instead of wanting something for ourselves, it's important that like Simeon and Anna, we are called to live in such a way that people can see in us faithfulness and generosity, wisdom, patience, peacefulness, and unconditional love. Now, I'm thinking that many of you know the name Nobel, as in Nobel Peace Prize. Well, that prize and all the other Nobel awards were instituted by a Swedish scientist, Alfred Nobel, who became extremely rich because he uh, invented and developed dynamite, an explosive that he first thought would be used as a tool in the mining industry. But as we know, it became used more often as a weapon of war. It was after Nobel saw the destructive nature of his explosive that he changed how he sold his his dynamite. For he saw this explosive as that which would deter aggression. Alfred Nobel wrote, My dynamite will lead people to peace faster than a thousand world conventions. For as soon as men find that in one instance whole armies will be utterly destroyed, they will search for the golden peace. But here's the interesting part of this. As he was delivering that message, a Paris newspaper erroneously printed Nobel's obituary seven years before he actually died. And in the obituary, Nobel was described as the inventor of dynamite, a substance which has led to the death of thousands and thousands, including the death of his own brother. Well, Nobel read that obituary and was horrified and immediately saw the need to change his legacy. So he started a process of change by first rewriting his last will and testament. And what he decided is that upon his death, the bulk of his massive estate would be placed in a trust and awarded as prizes annually given to leaders in the fields of science, chemistry, medicine, literature, and peace. In today's gospel, Luke introduces us to two people, Simeon and Anna, people who have a legacy. Two people, Simeon and Anna, that listened to and served the Lord and understood that one can not really live until they know their Savior. Simeon and Anna, that understood that faith is a lifetime commitment. Simeon and Anna, that understood that faith is that which we work at each and every day as we look to the Lord for guidance and direction. Those are the legacies that they left for us. And the faithfulness that we live by will lead to a legacy as well. That is not about us. Rather, it's about how we live in and for our Lord and Savior. Amen.
Let us pray together responsively. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all nations of the world. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. You share our humanity. Have mercy on the sick, the dying, and all who suffer this day. Blessed are you, Son of God. You dwell among us as the Word made flesh. Reveal yourself to us in word and sacrament, that we may bear your light to all the world. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time you sent your word, born of Mary, to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your Spirit, bless us in this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as children shining with the light of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And now, as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gift of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, 
that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.